from Byron, Mississippi, it's Lakeshore Church. And now we join Pastor Jay Frazier for today's message. I think today in the, um, in the body of Christ, I think there's some confusion of what I'll share with you today uh, from the standpoint of the nature, who we are and who we are in Jesus Christ and the difference. And some of those things I think have been even misrepresented from the pulpit uh, from time to time. Uh, but I want to share with you some thoughts along those lines. So if you're able, will you stand with us and honor God's word of chapter 16 of the gospel of Matthew? When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say? that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he asked them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus responded, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples orders to tell no one that he was the Messiah. From then on, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and to suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, be killed and be raised the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Oh, no, Lord, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned and told Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me because you're not thinking about God's concerns, but human concerns. If you've been around here at all, you know that our signature verse on that cross wall for our church is Matthew 16, 24. So in the context of this passage, this is the next thing Jesus said. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord, as we do, and we mean it from my heart. I pray that my words would be yours, my thoughts would be yours, and most of all, God, every one of us would walk in obedience, that today we would drive down a new stake, whether we understood it before or not, that I want to live in the, the spiritual nature of who I am in Jesus Christ, Lord, not in the sinful nature in Adam. And God, I thank you and I praise you for what you're going to do. Use us, we pray, and we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory, for we ask it and pray it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Let me start by, as you're settling in there, to tell you that I love nature. I, I've enjoyed this, this uh, beginning uh, for this sermon. Um, I'm going to tell you, if the ministry was sitting in the office for eight or ten hours every day, I would be among men most miserable. Uh, it's just not who I am. I, I love the outdoors. I, I love this time of year. I, I truly love nature. Uh, and, and I want to take a minute and, and share with you uh, just some th- places that I've been. It's pretty neat um, in my life, many others. But uh, the, I'm going to show you some pictures today just about nature, all right? Uh, the first one you'll see, that's uh, I was sitting on a hillside in uh, South Dakota. I've been blessed to go there, one of the prettiest places God carved out in this world. Uh, that's the sunrise, of course, coming up in the eastern sky, and, and the picture doesn't do it justice up there because you can see more maybe from this screen. You can see there's a lot of, it's like valley and hillsides and a lot of trees and, and just beautiful, beautiful, and the sun's like no prettier than I've ever seen it in that place. And then this is another one. This is, this is right at home for the, the Pope family. Uh, uh, Glenn's mother, it's Farmington, isn't it, Glenn? Uh, she lives in Farmington. Uh, Farmington, New Mexico is a missionary there. Uh, Glenn Pope's mother, uh, Miss Glenda, and uh, this is known as Ship Rock, Ship Rock, New Mexico. Uh, This this rock formation is just short of 1,600 feet tall. Um, I'll tell you this, that that, uh, one time we were there years ago on a a mission trip, and we go there, we've been going every year in that area lately as a church, and uh, we'll talk more about that in the months to come, but these castings right here, one time we were with a group, and I decided that uh, I was going to walk up and touch the rock. I was feeling froggy, and you know when you feel froggy, you jump, so uh, I, I left the group, and, and uh, I started walking up these castings, and that's what I'm talking about, this, all this stuff, looks like dust and dirt. I got about halfway up, and I was taking two or three steps and going one or two backwards. It was getting sort of dangerous, to be quite honest with you. I, I didn't really feel too comfortable, and I just happened to look back at the van we were in, and the van looked like the head of a number two pencil, the little dark part, the, the little lead. And I realized this is not the brightest thing I've done 
And, and I remember thinking, I was only halfway. I, I, I would have had to have some rope to just to get to it, to touch it. So a massive thing. It, and, uh, you know, I always think about stuff like this is that, did you know God causes and creates and he could take it away just by a word from his mouth? <laughs> that, that's pretty powerful stuff. It, 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 it's not mother nature. It's almighty God. Amen. Uh, just nature. I want to give you, show you a couple of others. Pretty neat. Both of them have to do with water. This is actually the Sea of Galilee. And, uh, and you're looking back, if you can tell on the mountainside there, that's actually a city. That's Tiberias. And we're out on the Sea of Galilee in a boat, and I took that picture myself. And uh, what, a, what a neat, neat, neat picture. Uh, and, and then, actually, the text takes place near the Sea of Galilee, uh, Caesarea Philippi. And then this took place for all the golfers in the room. You'll be envious. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. But this is between the, 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 the uh, green of, of, of hole number 17 and the tee box of hole number 18 at Pebble Beach in California. I, I was blessed to play there years ago and, and uh, couldn't afford it. Somebody else paid my way. Uh, couldn't nearby afford it. But these are all, there were hundreds of birds, like seagulls and all kind of thing. And then in this picture, there's also sea lions and things like that. It was really neat. The reason I shared that and took those couple of minutes to tell you that nature's amazing, isn't it? But the great thing about this sermon is that's not what I'm preaching about. I wanted you to feel relaxed and, and be envious that the pastor's been in some beautiful places in his life. But I also need to tell you that when you say nature today, I believe many people confuse the word. Even when we hear things like spiritual nature, we almost make it like the nature that we live in every day. And that's not it. Another thing that's misunderstood, another word that we use in nature is sinful nature. What in the world does that mean? And, and when people talk about operating in our sinful nature, it sounds like you're, you're taking shots at them and it sounds like we're less and, and all that. I want to clarify some things when it comes to nature today. In this text, you'll be reminded that Peter operated in two, two natures. He was operating in a spiritual nature when Jesus said to him, who, are, who do they say I am? He said that to the disciples and he said, you're the Christ, you're the Messiah. And he said, flesh and blood. Not the sinful part, not that person that was passed down to Adam, but the spiritual nature that has been revealed to you. My Father in heaven revealed this to you. That a boy, that a boy, Peter. You got it. You're on the right track. A few minutes later, he's talking about being crucified. And he's talking about being betrayed and people going to turn against him and, and all the higher ups and authority and all the issues he's going to have in Jerusalem and, and all that. And, and Peter, can you imagine? Listen, you need to get this part now. Can you imagine what it was like for Peter to take Jesus probably by the arm I don't know if you've ever done this as a parent. They probably send social services to your house now. But you imagine, he, he took, it says he revealed, he took him aside. I don't believe he said, hey, Jesus, come over here. I'll tell you something. Probably big old brawny Peter probably grabbed him by the arm and said, come over here. I want to talk to you. This ain't going to happen. All that stuff you just told us about, I am not going to let this happen. And in that moment, Jesus, who just previously had told him, man, you got it, Peter, heaven, the Father in heaven is telling you things. He called him the devil and told him to get behind him. So I've come to tell you today that every day in our life, you and I need to understand this. Every day in our life, you and I, if you know Jesus Christ, you have two natures. You have a sinful nature that was passed down to you from Adam. The Word of God's very plain in that. I almost did my sheet. You, you remember a few times that I put a, a whole bunch of verses up there and told you to take a picture of it with your phone and go study it? I almost did that because there are literally dozens of verses that clarify what we're talking about today. And I think today it's misunderstood in the average church or the, the church goer. Is that you and I have a sinful nature passed down to us from Adam. But if you know Jesus Christ today and you've accepted him as your Savior, you also have a spiritual nature that was born in you. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a moment, in a few minutes. And all we see is this story with Peter is that in one moment, he was operating in the spiritual guy. And he was applauded by God. He was applauded by the Son of God that you got it. Just a few minutes later, he's telling him he's the devil and get behind him because he was now operating in Peter. He was operating in the sinful flesh, the sinful nature. In that moment, Peter realized he was going to exalt himself, and he was not going to let this happen. And remember how he, it ends up with Jesus says, you're more concerned about yourself than you are about godly stuff. And so we need to understand that today. What nature trail are we on? Listen, again, we see the flesh and the spirit analogies in this thing. You got the revelation of heaven, and a few minutes later, we're acting like the devil. Very much represents us today. And so maybe the soothing part of those nature pictures are long gone. 
Because I want to tell you, this is something that we must get today. We must get it in our own life to know how we operate spiritually. So many people are defeated. Something goes awry in their life and they, they wonder if they can get it back. And if I was saved, here's what the church does with it. If, if they were saved, they wouldn't act that way. If they were this or they were that, then they wouldn't succumb to that. Every day, you and I have a choice that we make. I've already prayed it today. Today, I want, my, I want the spiritual nature to win over the sinful nature. Today, and we understand both of those within us. There's not one verse that says God removes well, upon salvation, upon sanctification, spirit-filled living. There's not one verse that says God removes the sinful nature from us on this side of heaven. But I've got great news for you. On the other side, it's going to be gone. Isn't that great news? We can't imagine how that will be. Let me give you some thoughts here. We must get this nature business, all right, and understand it. The first thing is life's a journey. It truly is. We are all because of sin on a path, every one of us. Different parts of the path, different parts of the journey, but we're all on this journey. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Can you say all with me? All. Not some, not more wicked, less wicked. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you haven't, I'd like to see you after church and tell you you're wrong. I'd just like to do that. Some of you need to wake up and stay with me, all right? Romans 3.23, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The reason there's sickness today, the reason there's heartache, the reason there's death, the reason there's cemeteries, the reason we got to have a resurrection is because of sin. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But that's not the only journey we're on. We have the potential to be on another journey, another path is found. I want to show it to you in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. I will warn you over the next few minutes, I've got a lot of scripture. I'm glad this is on Facebook. The people that are tuning in, it's also recorded. You can go back a lot because I don't want anybody to walk out of here and go, well, Brother Jay was on one today. And I'll tell you what's on one is the Word of God. And the Word of God is on us. It's time for the church to realize God has not called us to a sin and religion. He's not called us to, to operate more in the sinful nature than we do in our spiritual nature. They're at war with each other. So we get this. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. And we too, Paul's talking, all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires. Previously. Carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts as we were by nature children under wrath as the others were also. Watch this. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive in, with Christ. Even though we were dead in trespasses, you are saved by grace. Wow. Did we get it? Do you see those two? Is it yes, previously we had this sinful nature that was passed down to us, but because of Jesus Christ, there's been another nature that's been birthed in us. Years ago, I had the opportunity. There was a, we were on a radio station in Georgia, and uh, the people at the radio station came to me and said, I want you to consider doing this. And, and I said, what is it? They said, uh, we want you on Monday through Friday, we want you to do a, uh, a one-minute spot that we'll play several times during the day on the radio. And, and I, the first thing I thought was, wait a second, that's just one day and then I got to have another one? And they said, oh yeah, we want, we want one for every day, Monday through Friday, so I got, we got to have 20 a, a month. Listen, folks, I don't know if you know this about public speaking or writing or whatever, it's hard to reduce it down to a minute. I breathe deeper and longer than a minute during a sermon. And to have a whole thought, sometimes, you know, you can amen that. It takes me a while. I'm wordy. And, and so, but we named that program Life's a Journey because it is. All of us are on this journey together. Nicodemus asked Jesus, he said, I want, what, what, what must I do? I want eternal life. Good teacher. <laughs> and Jesus rocked this world and he said, you must be born again. Now I want to tie this all together when we talk about a journey. When you and I stand in front of the Lord, watch this now. One nature people are not going to heaven. Every one of us have a sinful nature. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You got it? Let me tell you who's going to heaven. Somebody, everybody that has two natures. If you've not been to the cross of Calvary and asked Jesus to come into your life and been born again, you only have one nature. And see, people think they're going to stand in front of God and it's going to wash when we stand there and God says, I don't know who you are. But you say, wait a second, I was born. I was born from Adam. I have this nature within me. And he's going to say, yeah, you got the sinful nature, but you don't have the spiritual nature. Are you following what I'm saying? Life's a journey. And God has set it up that in this journey, there are two nature trails. One came to us because of Adam. The other comes to us because we make a choice for Jesus Christ. And listen to me very carefully. Have you not chosen Jesus Christ yet? Today is the day of salvation. 
Because our only hope when I stand in front of God Almighty is that spiritual nature that's been birthed and born in me and makes me a child of God. Wow. And I, I wrote it out so that you just remember it. Listen, the journey is dealing with two natures. And so you don't hear this stuff preach much. We've spent all of our time. We don't want to offend anybody. You know, we, 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 don't, we, don't, want to, we don't want anybody to be upset with us. We sure don't want them to go down the street to another church. So we sort of, we, we sort of lower it down. I got to tell you, folks, we need to define it better today, not worse. We need to be clearer today with clarity rather than being questioned about it. And today, I'm telling you, to get to heaven, you got to have a second nature. You got to be born again, just like you were in the delivery room and just like they, they took out your birth certificate and, and they signed it and they said, right now, this day is when, this moment, this, this minute was when you were born. We also have to have a minute when we were born into Jesus Christ too, because two natures. So not only is life a journey, but also when I think about it, we got to get this nature business and, and close to our heart and understand it. Secondly, and I got to tell you, it's no joke. Brother Jay, what are you talking about? There's some serious ramifications to this life. In a few minutes, Peter went from being the, the front of the bus to the back of the bus. And in just a few minutes, he went from being something that could be celebrated and represent Christ well and represent God well to being far from it. And today we need to get this, not a joke. And I think some people have passed it off. And you know where we passed it off as? Because God's a God of love and he's a God of mercy and he's a God of grace. And he is. But listen to me. He established the way that we're supposed to go, and he's not going to compromise that. I thought about this. I had a conversation with some folks. That, they said, Brother Jay, somebody said, they were, you were really screaming and hollering last week. So I thought I'd scream and holler today so they'd get used to it. But anyway, <laughs> Romans seven eighteen. Notice this, what Paul said. For I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my flesh. For the desire to do what is good is with me, but there's no ability to do it. How about that? Does that sound like heresy? That's the Apostle Paul. All the things he went through, and now he's given us a verse out here that says that everything in me is bad. That's that sinful nature, folks. And church, we need to hear this too. Quit casting people aside because they make dumb decisions. Huh? We, we have, we, we, we have a, a pedigree. We have a, a big group of people that we could go back that have made terrible choices in their walk with God, and they messed up royally. As I said earlier, the church comes along and says, well, they weren't saved if they went and did that. No, they just operated, made a terrible choice and started operating in the sinful nature instead of the spiritual one. But the great news is, is wherever we are, God will deal with us when we move about that. I'm not making excuses, just highlighting it for you. Nothing good dwells in us. I also want to capture this. Heard a lot of conversation about this lately. And I know we've had some teachings going on in different uh, pods of our church. And it's about the fruit of the Spirit. See, when I think about the fruit of the Spirit... I want to show them to you, but here's, here's the thing. It's not the fruit of Jay in the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Now, this is good teaching. And we have the Spirit of God within us, and I'll establish that even further more in a minute. But it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. The fruit of the Spirit, I've taught this a lot, the, the Spirit word there is capital S. It's the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit residing in us. Not the fruit of me, but the fruit of the Spirit. That second nature that we're establishing today, that the Spirit lives in us. Now watch this, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. It said, don't you yourselves know that you are God's temple and that the Spirit, capital S, of God lives in you? Now I've got to establish this for you. Okay, so we have the Spirit of God within us if we're born again. Amen? Everybody got it? Give me one of these if you're not an ameniter. It's sort of liberating. Well, you just amen like visually. We have the spirit within us. And all those fruit then of the spirit living within us is in us. You still following me? You say, well, Brother Jay, what happens when I mess up? Well, what happens is I'm living over here in the spiritual nature. It's a great Sunday. And all of a sudden somebody says something or something comes up or I'm tempted or I sin, whatever comes up. And I choose now, watch this. It's not a joke. It's serious business. I choose not to live here in the spirit, but now I go over here to the sinful nature. Hmm. See, the fruit's still over there. <laughs> see, see the, the fruit doesn't follow me. The fruit stays with the Holy Spirit. It's evident in my life when I'm living in the spiritual nature. And church, we've so abused this. I hear people say, man, sometimes I hear people talk and I go, man, they, they do not understand just basic theology. 
that we spend all of our time, some, a lot of our time over here explaining away the reason I have these things in my life and almost giving credit to God that that's the way I am instead of living in the spiritual nature. And over here's where the fruit is, not over there, the sinful nature, all right? So it's not a joke. We need to, we need to understand it. That second nature is living within us, all right? It's there. We, we need to know. And then Galatians 5, 17, I told you a lot of scripture. Please go back and study this out. But it's powerful. For the flesh desires what is against the spirit. Capital S. And the spirit, capital S, desires what is against the flesh. Do you see the two natures now? Within me, I got this, I got this sinful nature. You wonder why you're tempted? It's because you have a flesh. I think along these lines, thirdly, and I've already said it, but it needs to be put out there. There's always potential for a jump. What in the world are you talking about? I just said it a while ago. From one hour to the next. You ever been there? You ever been when you were on the top of the mountain, man, God was so real, and you messed up royally right after that? We've seen it, haven't we? I can name you some names, very famous people that were on top of it. I believe God's hand of blessing was on them, and God was by. I don't believe they were hypocrites. I don't believe they were charlatans. I don't believe they were out to, 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 to just do harm to the gospel, and they failed mightily. Brother Jay, what happened? Here's what I believe everything about me. They were operating in their spiritual nature, and the, the enemy won. In a low moment, maybe they were weak, maybe they were tired, they succumbed to something in their sinful nature, and it, it, it brought great repercussions to the cause of Christ. And you listen to me, you need to hear this. It can happen to Jay Frazier too. You and I need to live in the spiritual nature, close to the heart of God. For this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness. Two more verses. Godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, notice this now, they will keep you from being useless and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, not just for the sake of this sermon, but, but I need to say it. I wonder how many people in their walk with God have become useless and unfruitful. Ouch. Not here to name names and point fingers. But you know what I say? I believe everything about me. That's the reason you got to get this. We got to get, we got to get this nature business and live in it. Is that what's happened is this. We've excused all kinds of things in our life in the sinful nature and we're calling it the spiritual nature and basically said we can't do any better. And, and somehow we've even borne it like we can't do it any better and God's not able to help us. God's provided everything we need to live in the spiritual nature. It's in that passage. He doesn't want us useless and unfruitful. He wants us to be fruit bearers. The church comes along and says, oh, you're meddling if you talk about somebody bearing fruit. You talk about obedience and living the Christian life. They don't want to hear that. They just want enough of God to go to heaven. Yeah, that's true. But God also wants us to have a spiritual nature here that brings glory and honor to him before we get there. Not a sinful nature that we excuse away. And the last is this. It's also a job. And I wrote this down this way, a joy or a jolt. I won't stay here long at all. I won't tell you this. I can't imagine, the, I can't number the amount of times that I've had joy when I spent time with the Lord knowing I'm walking in all the light I need to walk in. Joy. Joy. That's unspeakable and full of glory. But let me also be transparent with you today. I can, the reason the word jolt, not just because it starts with a J and an O. <laughs> I can't tell you the amount of times that God's jolted me having a stinking attitude about somebody else. The amount of times God's broken my heart that as a pastor you stand up here and, and then God reveals to me that you got hidden stuff. You got, you got things and directions you're going that aren't pleasing to me. And so in that joy that we want to have and, and that relationship we want to have with God, sometimes there's a jolt when God reveals to you. We've been so theology so long that we have minimized trivialized what Jesus did on the cross. He didn't save us to a sin in religion. He saved us to live in the spirit nature. Do we have to deal with that joker over there? You sure are until you make it to heaven. But blessed be to God, God gave us enough in him for us to live the Christian life out the way that we're supposed to. And whatever that looks like, then walk in obedience to the Lord. That's where we miss. I said, you gotta get it. Remember, I showed y'all some nature pictures. Don't you feel better? It's all coming. I found this. Listen, 
Here's the goal. It's not perfection. It's just living on the right nature. That's the goal today. I'm going to tell my prayer in just a minute. But I found this, and this says it all. Someone said, Brother Jay, what's, what's, what's the hope then? If I got this sinful nature that dogs me every day, and this crazy stuff that goes on in my life, these weird temptations and weird thoughts and all this stuff, then what's my hope? Am I doomed? Not if you stay on the right path. <laughs> Surround yourself with the right people, you know? Put yourself in the, in the right place. Stay on the path. Don't go wandering through nature. Stay on the path. <laughs> if God reveals to you something that where you're wayward and you're not living like you need to live, get back on the path. <laughs> I love that. I'm almost getting excited about my own sermon. Why have I shared so many scriptures today? We got to get it. It's imperative. It's vital that you leave here today understand, okay, preacher, I got it now. For maybe the very first time, I got two natures in me, don't I? Yep. If you're born again, if you're not, you only have one. You have no hope today. The only hope we have is that second nature, being born again. Again, Nicodemus said, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, you must be born again. Just straight up answer, born in that second nature. Wow. I'm going to show you one more today. If I haven't given you enough scripture, this will do it, all right? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24. Take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires. To be renewed in your spirit of your minds. And notice that spirit. Go back, guys, real quick. Like, notice that spirit's cap, uh, small s. That means us. All right? Two more. And to put on the new self, the one created, verse, last verse, and to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness and righteousness and purity of truth. <laughs> Here it is. This, this is the Christian life. What are you taking off and what are you putting on? The Old, Testament right, the Old Testament writer said, our righteousness in God's sight is as filthy rags. The only hope I got is being on the spiritual nature of putting on Jesus Christ. Laying that old guy aside, here's, here's been my prayer. I, I started praying it just with this sermon, and it's just a few days old. Lord, I prayed this morning. Lord, I want today, I want my spiritual nature to win over my sinful nature. That's been my prayer. Pretty good, pretty simple prayer, isn't it? It's a powerful prayer, though. God, I want my spiritual nature. In Jesus Christ, I've been saved. I know I'm born again. I want my spiritual nature to win over my sinful nature. Now, Brother Jay, are you saying today you have the opportunity? Oh, yeah, I'm married. I got three kids. I got a son-in-law and a boyfriend-in-law. I mean, I got people I'm going to be around today. I'm going to have plenty of opportunity to be in my sinful nature. I pastor church. I pastor some of you folks. I mean, I got plenty of it. There's an enemy out there that wants me to fall, and he wants me to fall miserably. And God, if I realize I'm over here, I won't make excuses for it, but I'll change and be what you want me to be. God, help us to quit making excuses for the sinful nature, and God, help us to live in the spiritual nature. Can't say it any better than that. So here's my question. I'm done. What nature trailer are you on? Lakeshore, cmc.org.